Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 96. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 10, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Finance Excel class section. We have a great video here, totally important concept. We want to talk about the geometric mean. In our last video, we talked about using the arithmetic mean, or what uh, everyday language calls an average. We saw how we could use the arithmetic mean to uh, maybe use to predict from for the future what a stock might return. But geometric mean is another uh, type of average, and in some case it, cases it is the better average to use. All right, so here's our situation. 2001, we have stock value of $25.75. And then over the next uh, few years, we have the stock return. So return 10%, 12, 3, and then minus 9. First thing I'm going to do is count how many years. I'm going to say I could use the count and um, count numbers right here, but I'm going to say that year minus this year. 2005 minus 2001 says there's four years. Equally, if you didn't have the years, you could just say count. Count counts, counts numbers. There's one, two, three, four. So it return four. All right, so we're, we're trying to, I want to try and uh, get at not only what the geometric mean is, um, but why it works and why sometimes it gives us a better average. So first I want to calculate the stock value. So we started here and I wanted the end stock value for each one of these years. So I'm going to go equals 1 plus this. And throughout this class, we know that anytime we see this, we, we know the 1 represents the principal or the original amount, and then plus or minus some change, right? All right, I'm going to double click and send that down. OK, 1 plus the rate that the stock changes each year is very important when we get to the geo mean. But right now, let's just use that 1 plus the, the uh, return to calculate our actual stock value. So there it is, 2001 times 1 plus the rate. That's the end value at the end. So we went from beginning of 2001, we had this. And the end of 2001, first day of 2002, that is our value. Now I'm going to come down here and say, oh yeah, that value, previous va value times 1 plus the change. And there it is. At the end of, when we copy it down, we have 29.73. And so given these returns, that is the exact amount that this stock is worth at the end of 2005. Now, I, I want to do a little um, math over here on the side. I want to figure out if we can calculate this amount um, in a slightly different way. Well, we've seen so far in this class, we can have a starting value, and we can go that, right? And it gives us that amount. But and Pretty much any time we've had 1 plus a rate or 1 minus a rate, we then raise it to some exponent. But that's only when it's exactly 10% each year. Notice these are all different. So we can just go like this, times this, times this, times this. No problem. That'll give us the exact ending answer. Because each time, it's increasing or decreasing right here, 1 plus or minus the change. And that gives us our exact answer also. Now let's take this one step further. Let's go ahead and say equals this. And instead of times, 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 I'm going to use times. And we need to put all of these. But I'm going to use the product function. The product function, if you have long strings of multiplication, you can just highlight these. This is kind of like the sum function, but for multiplying. Right, so we can see we get the same answer there. Now I want to see how we calculate the geometric mean. Let's just go uh, product of all of these. Because the, the heart of the geometric formula to calculate an average, you first have to multiply all these. So I'm going to do product. That gives us the uh, single, if we could somehow calculate a single um, uh, increase for all of these four year periods, that would be at 0.15. Over the four years, that's our total gain. All right, now I want to check to see if this is true. And 
And sure enough, we get that. So the key is going to be uh, this right here. Now, because we ultimately want a single rate that will express this um, the, the change when we have different uh, rate changes each period. So now I'm going to come over here down to geometric uh, mean. Actually, I'm going to do this one right here. And I'm going to say product of all of these. And now notice we're, incre we're changing whatever the change is. Sometimes it's increased, sometimes it's dec decreases. But over four periods, if we just multiply those, it gives us this number right here. But guess what? Since we went four periods forward, we can take the fourth root here. And the way we do roots is we caret 1 divided by. If we take the fourth root, it gives us the average change over these periods, 1.03, etc. Now, we don't, we, want, we don't want that 1, so we're going to simply say minus 1. And that is the geometric rate. Now, let's go ahead and just prove to ourselves, I'm going to do another check right here, that that actually works. Because in this class, remember, so often we're given a compounding rate we add 1 to it and raise it to whatever power, and it gives us the end amount, the end future value. So let's see if this works. Because remember, this is, uh, right, as it says here, geometric mean the true compounding rate. And that's the, the beauty and power of the geometric mean. So I'm going to say 1 plus this we just calculated, raised to the what? The fourth power. So the point here is if you are going to use a rate, uh, uh, a percentage uh, rate to estimate into the future, sometimes uh, the geo mean is perfect. Because as we can see, it gives us, at least looking at the past data, the exact same answer as we get if we did it longhand. All right, um, now I want to look at this one other. I'm going to look at the geo mean as compared to the arithmetic mean. Now let's just go ahead and calculate down here, our arithmetic mean. We saw this in our last video. We said just take the average. So the average of all those is 0.4. And now we're going to see that there is, we don't have to do it longhand this way. We can use the geo mean. And we want to compare. We want to calculate both of these. Well, we can, well actually, we can already see, oh, this is bigger. But if this is the true compounding rate and this is bigger, does that mean when you use arithmetic mean to predict, to project into the future that you may overestimate? Yes, it does. If it fits the exact pattern here, which it's never going to, right? then this is exactly true. The difference between these is this is a more conservative way to calculate an average to then use to predict in the future. This is a less conservative way. The arithmetic mean will always be bigger than this unless all of these are exactly the same. Right? So if these are all the same, arithmetic mean equals geo mean. But that's almost, uh, that's basically never going to happen. All right, uh, instead of doing it this long way, I want to see a couple other alternative methods. There is a geo mean function. The geo mean function does require that you take your rates. And usually you have these. You don't, you're not given these. But it requires that you have them 1 plus, just like we saw over here when we multiplied them with a the product. So geo mean will take that. And geo mean, if you enter it, is very nice, but it gives you 1 plus, which a lot of times is perfect. For our case right here, we're just going to then subtract 1. All right. so. I'm still going to show you one other method, because a lot of times, if you don't want to use up real estate like this, calculating 1 plus, we can go ahead and uh, figure out a single cell formula to calculate geo mean. Now, geo mean of these will not work. What we need is plus 1 of each one of those. So what happens if I say plus 1? In this class, it's not an advanced Excel class, but I am going to teach you something about 
what is called array formulas. Normally, when we do formulas in Excel, we say 1 plus some other number. But what? This is a bunch of numbers. I'm going to highlight that and show you that that's a bunch of numbers. I'm going to hit the F9 key. That's evaluate. Notice it's all the individual rates. Well, we already knew that, right? Because the cell references were just looking at these. I'm going to control Z to undo that evaluate. Well, in regular formulas, you are not allowed to take a bunch of numbers and add a single number. You're just not allowed to do that unless you use a secret keyboard shortcut. And the secret keyboard shortcut, notice what, how do we enter a formula? We enter, or we might control enter, right? But you get a value error, and that value error says you are not allowed to take multiple items and add a single number. Ah, but if you hold Control and Shift and then hit Enter, the secret uh, signal to Excel is Control, Shift, Enter. And it will calculate. Now notice, our, we were telling Excel, I want you to go ahead and do an array calculation. I want you to add one to all of these. So our way of signaling to Excel was Control, Shift, Enter. Excel tells us that it understood that we were doing an array formula by putting those curly brackets in. Those curly brackets are Excel telling you, yeah, this worked. This is an array formula. Now, still further, I would like to um, show you how to avoid doing Control Shift Enter. Notice, um, well, not notice. There's a special function called sum product. So I'm going to put some product around this. And it's one of the few functions that actually can handle arrays. Now, if we put this geomean in here, it normally requires Control-Shift-Enter. But if we put it into this, fun this function that accepts arrays, it'll simply calculate it. And all the sum product is going to do is geomean spits out a single number. So it's like using the sum function with a single number. But watch this. Now that I put sum product, I just hit Enter. If I highlight that, you can see there's no curly brackets, and it calculated perfectly. And then from that, you do minus 1. And that is how you can do a single cell geo geometric mean average without do adding a bunch of extra cells. We're doing this from the actual uh, percentage values. Now, we want to uh, take this one step further. We want to actually calculate our individual values using arithmetic mean and then our individual values using geometric mean. And in finance, a lot of people use arithmetic mean to estimate things into the future. And uh, some people use geometric mean also. So let's go ahead and do it. Equals um, our original stock value times 1 plus arithmetic mean. Right For that cell, I'm just going to hit Enter. So you can already see that for that particular year, it uh, Underestimating. Geomean will do the same, but by less. But now let's calculate the rest of this column. That value there, whatever the prior period value was, plus the geomean, and I'm going to have to hit the F4 key to lock it. Control Enter, and then drag it down. So you could see we end up with a slightly, va a slightly higher value. Now let's do equals, and we already pretty much did this one. But let's do it explicitly for each year, 1 plus. And you can already guess when we use the geo mean, it will calculate the correct ending value. Equals this one times, and then open parentheses, 1 plus our geo mean. And I'm going to have to lock it with the F4 key, close parentheses. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Ah, and you can see we get the exact same answer. So, how do we use this information in stock analysis? Well, we calculate these um, averages based on past data, and we would use it to predict into the future. And this is the type of formula we would do. Now, I'm going to do it just based on our starting value here, and we'll uh, kill two birds with one stone. I'll show you that we can get the same two examples exact answers here without doing all these cells. And we'll see this is how you uh, use it. So let's just assume, hey, we have this stock value. It's today. And we're saying, what is it going to be worth in five years? Well, the arithmetic mean, we'd say that 
and caret 4. So A, we can see we get the same answer there. But if we were uh, simply calculating this from past data, and this was our value now, it would tell us a an estimate uh, based on past data that this is what we'd expect in uh, four years. Again, anytime you use past data, you're assuming that what happened in the past is what's going to happen in the future. If what happens in the future has never happened in the past, then your model is not going to predict correctly. All right, let's do geo mean. That times, and we already saw this one, 1 plus, boop, caret 4. All right, uh, in next video, we'll actually use uh, past uh, stock values, not returns like this, and look at geo mean and, and uh, uh, arithmetic mean. All right, see you next video.